Hello, my name is Alan, and I'm going to talk about number theory and zeta functions. My research mentor is Dr. Lane Thier, so for a second, I'd like to give a special thank you to him for letting me join with him on this project. Now, what is number theory? Well, let's first start with this, with some motivating questions. What are the sums of the following series? Here, you see that you're trying to solve the sum of the reciprocals, one, a half, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and so on. Here is the squares, one plus a fourth plus a ninth plus a sixteenth plus one twenty-fifth. Here you see the cubes, an eighth, one twenty-seventh, one sixty-four, one over one twenty-five, and the fourth powers, one sixteenth, one eighty-first, one over two fifty-six, and one over six twenty-five. So this is the underlying questions in our project. First, let me give you an introduction to number theory. Number theory is the branch of math devoted primarily to the study of integers and integer value functions, especially prime numbers. Prime numbers, as you may know, are the numbers only divisible by one in itself. So two, for example, is a prime number. Three is a prime number. Five, seven, 11, and 13 are all prime numbers. These prime numbers are important because they're the fundamental units of all numbers, because each number can be expressed as a unique product of primes. 20, for example, is two times two times five in all primes. Since these prime numbers are the building blocks. We're concerned about the distribution of prime numbers. How far is one prime number from the next? Here's some properties of primes. In 300 BCE, you could prove that there's an infinite number of primes and that every positive integer can be expressed as a unique product of primes. The key thing here is that the number of primes less than x is approximately x over log of x. This is known as the prime number theorem. In other words, you, to find the number of primes less than a million, you substitute one, one million in this expression here, and you get an, an approximate number. The gamma function is defined as the improper integral, zero to infinity, of x to the power of s minus one e to the negative x dx. This is a highly important function because it allows us to use calculus to study primes. Other interesting properties it has is that gamma of s plus one is s gamma of s, and gamma of one half is the square root of pi. Now this is the holy grail. The Riemann zeta function is defined as the summation from one to infinity of one over n to the s. So in other words, one plus one over two to the s plus one over three to the s and so on and so on. This infinite sum can be expressed as an infinite product over the primes, one over one minus p to the negative s. Notice an infinite number of primes. This infinite product is known as the order product so to study primes, we need to study the, the Riemann zeta function because it has all the primes encoded in it. Although this function was originally defined for the real numbers, Riemann in 1859 extended it to the complex numbers. He did so by finding a dysfunctional equation. Here, here are some special values. Zeta of one is the sum of the reciprocals from earlier. And we have the harmonic series. This series is actually called the harmonic series and it diverges to infinity. Zeta of two is pi squared over six and this is known as the Basel problem. Zeta of three converges to 1.20205 approximately and that's Apri's constant. Zeta of four is pi to the fourth over 90. And here are other values. You notice that at even integers, it converges nicely to a unique value. For the odd integers, it converges to a approximate approximate value. In other words, we don't know the exact value. And these are the values for the odd numbers. We have a special formula to, to compute all the even integers, and it's given by this. b of n is the set nth Bernoulli number given by the gener generating function. This, we have a special formula to compute values of the Riemann zeta function at negative integers, which is this. Since b of n is zero for n odd and n greater than three, zeta of a ne negative two n is zero. In other words, the Riemann zeta function at negative even integers is zero. There are other types of zeta functions. The Hurwitz zeta function is given by the summation from zero to infinity of one over n plus q to the s. Notice that if you substitute one in for q, you get the Riemann zeta function. So this is just a generalization of the Riemann zeta function. The Lurch zeta function is an even bigger generalization of the Hurwitz zeta function. Essentially, you replace the numerator one with e to the two pi i and lambda. 
and the Lutz transcendent is an even bigger generalization. You replace the numerator with z. Notice that uh, you just replace z to 2 pi i lambda. So phi, the Lutz transcendent of 2 pi i lambda alpha s is the Lutz zero function at lambda alpha s. Eureka characters are also very important to study primes. We denote them by chi, this x symbol, and it goes from the integers to the complex numbers. And here's some properties. There exists an integer k such that chi of n is chi of n plus k. That just means that it is, it repeats every, with a period of k. Chi of n is zero if the greatest common denominator is greater than one, and chi of n is not equal to zero if the greatest common denominator is one. And finally, for all integers m and, m and n, chi is completely multiplicative, which means that chi of n times n is chi of m times chi of n. The principal character is chi of 1, given by chi of 1 of n is 0 if the greatest common divisor is greater than 1, and chi of 1 of n is 1 is if the greatest common divisor is 1. Now, these are important because we define the Dirichlet L functions with the Dirichlet characters. The Riemann zeta function is a Dirichlet L function. As, as you may recall, it's, it's the summation of, of 1 over n to s, and its order product is this. <coughs> A Dirichlet L function is a function of the form chi of n over n to the s, and it has this order product, 1 over 1 minus chi of p, p to the negative s for p prime. These L functions are so powerful because we can prove that there's an infinite, infinite number of primes ending in the digit 1, 3, 7, or 9. This is stronger than the, re than the result you could prove. You could, you could prove that there, are inf there is an infinite number of primes, but with L functions, we say that there's an infinite number of primes ending in 1, 3, 7, 9. Now, this is what we're mainly studying. Hu Song Choi studied the double integral from 0 to infinity, from 0 to infinity, dx dy, over 1 plus x times 1 plus the x squared p through of y. We define the Choi alternating the Richard series as negative 1 to the power of n, times 1 over a n plus b to the power of s plus or minus 1 over a n plus a minus b to the s, and d plus minus s a b as the non-alternating series. What Choi did is that he found five values of d Choi minus 2 a b for a b 4 1 8 1 12 1 16 1 21. So in other words, here are the values he found. For 2 4 1, he found pi squared over 8 radical 2. For 2 8 1, he found this. For 2 12 1, he found this. For 2.16.1, he found this. And for 2.21, he found this. We found some interesting properties as well. We saw that Detroit plus minus can be written as a linear combination of two Lutz data functions as follows. We also want to connect the non alternating series to a D ratio L function under these constraints. In other words, like so, D plus minus of SAB is equal to 2 over V of A times the sum of chi, the conjugate of chi of B times L of s chi. We also obtain the formula that d choi plus minus of 1ab all squared is d plus 2ab, or in other words, in series notation. It, we also obtain the derivative of d choi plus of sab. If you take the derivative with respect to b, you get negative s d choi minus of s plus 1ab. This is a remarkable result because now we can take the, the derivative of this expression and we get this. So we now we have a formula for any value of a and b for d choi minus of 2ab. Now, if we take the derivative again, we have d choi plus the 3ab, and we have and we can substitute any values of a and b n, and we can get a unique value. And you can keep taking derivatives to get and to get formulas of d choi minus of n even ab and n odd ab. This is especially important because now we have an infinite number of formulas for infinitely many values of a and b. For example, you can plug in 83, 283 for d Choi minus, and you get this exact value. Choi only found five values. We found infinitely many values. d Choi minus of 251 is this value, and d Choi plus of 341 is this value. Now, in the future, we're trying to generalize similar results. This is an even bigger generalization of the Choi d Richard series. Under these constraints, we're trying to find out its special values and its properties. 
here are the references that I use for this presentation. I encourage you to look all of them up, especially Johan Wasserlund's proof using geometry of the Basel problem. Thank you for listening.